Hello, everybody. It is 8.32 a.m. I just woke up. If you wanted to know what I look like when I just wake up, this is it. But today, I'm taking you guys with me, and this should be fun. So, I am going to go take a shower, and I will be back to show you what I do when I get dressed. Okay, I am cleaner than I was, and I am back. And I have my phone on a tripod, so it doesn't look like I'm in an earthquake, but I can't promise you that it won't look like an earthquake today because I don't have a fancy camera, I just have my phone, and whenever I go to videotape anything, all of a sudden I shake like nobody's business. But if you don't know me, my name is Nick, I am 19, and I am a full-time clothing reseller, especially right now. I am also a full-time college student, and so... I am excited to take you guys with me what, for what it's like to live in a day in the life of me. This is my first time ever making one of these videos, and so this should be interesting, but let's go. This is my closet. As you can tell, I have, I like clothes and shoes. This is the rest of my room. There's Audrey Hepburn, my icon. But yeah, uh, this, I'm going to make my outfit for the day first that's what i always do right away in the morning and i will show you guys my indecisiveness so this is the outfit i ultimately chose sorry i'm awkward now, I'm going to do my face, do my hair, and I'm going to make some coffee, and I'll meet you in my office for shipping. Okay, I have my coffee and I am in my office. If you hear the buzzing, I'm sorry. The air conditioner is exactly right outside my window. But I figured I'd tell you guys what I'm planning on doing today and taking you guys with me. So right now I'm about to do my shipping for the weekend. I think I have about 15 things to package up. I went to the post office on Saturday morning. So there's a little less than, you know, there would normally be because I already went once this weekend. But Nonetheless, I have a bunch of stuff to package up. After that, I'm going to take you guys thrifting with me a little bit. Uh, we'll see how that goes. And yeah, we'll do some, we'll go to the post office together, all that fun stuff. I already pulled most of the stuff that I am shipping out today, but I can give you a sneak peek of what I have in my office really quick if you would like that. Well, I mean, I don't know, I'm talking to myself right now, so I'm going to do that whether you like it or not. But yeah, I don't have the most beautiful office, but it works. I probably have about 30% of my inventory in my office, and then I have a basement space where I store the rest of my inventory. I live with my parents in my family's house. Uh, I go to college full time, and instead of paying to live down there, which I have, a, I'm perfectly capable of, I could move out, but I choose to stay here and save money so that I can graduate college debt free. I'm going to school paid for 100% by what I make on Poshmark. So I live here and the other benefit to that is that I have a photo studio and office and a huge basement space for all of my inventory. So I don't really have a limit to how much inventory that I can take. But this is my office, excuse my hand. So this is what my office looks like. I hang my purses there. These are all my shoes, don't mind my hangers and bags. These is where I keep, this is where I keep all of my pants. Those are a consignment client's stuff up there. Here's my little desk area. There's my stuffed animal corner, my coffee. And then here is where I keep all of my sweaters. And then this is another one of my consignment uh, client's stuff that I keep right there. But yeah, that is what I have in my office. And I'll take you downstairs really quick 
it's very dark down there, so I don't know if y'all want to see it because there's not a lot to see down in the basement. I figured we could chat a little bit while I am packaging some stuff up so I don't just time lapse the whole thing. But I'm sorry that this angle's kind of funky. I just didn't know how to set up my tripod so it could like see me and do everything but maybe i'll go through the first couple things i sold this weekend this is a gap midi dress little moment i've had this sucker for like a year and a half i've i just relisted it using the copy feature on poshmark which is arguably my favorite new feature they've made in a long time because i was never a relister because as a college student i don't have time to do anything and other than list, like I have to choose my battles because I don't have unlimited time during the year. Now I do, because I do it now like my job, so I have time in the summer to do cross listing and stuff like that. But during the school year, I really have to pick my battles um, on what I want to spend my time on because I have to do my schoolwork. And I also am a dancer, so I have to go to rehearsals and whatever. So really I'm doing Poshmark for like an hour in the evening every day. And then I pack my stuff up early in the morning and ship it out while also simultaneously doing 15 bajillion other things. But I am wrapping this one up in tissue. I don't always do that, but I don't know. I ran it. This one, I usually just do it in um, ribbon, but this ribbon would not match the dress. So, and I'm particular like that because I'm weird. Let's talk about the copy feature. I want to know in the comments what you guys feel about it. If you are a Poshmark user, if you're just somebody watching this video, welcome. I sell other people's junk on the internet for a job and on Poshmark for the most part, but also on eBay and Instagram. And so I'm really struggling here. There we go. And so uh, that's what I do for my job. And if you're interested about that, watch some of my other videos. But I think that this feature, like I said, is one of the most beneficial features uh, that they've released in a long time because it allows you to relist so easy. And a lot of people don't understand why relisting is actually beneficial. You know, if you're if you have extra time, don't mind me wailing a knife around. If you have extra time, I would recommend relisting on after you commu after you share your own stuff. In the hierarchy of things that you should do on Poshmark to help you increase your sales. It should go self-sharing, then listing, and then relisting. Because the, so the default setting when somebody searches for something on Poshmark is just shared. And so say I want a pair of J. Crew jeans. You're going to search in the search bar, you know, J. Crew high-rise skinny jeans. And the stuff that's going to pop up first are the jeans that were shared by the seller most recently. So say I just reach, I just shared my J. Crew jeans in my closet. Now that buyer is going to see those at the top of the search page. But the second most popular search feature is just in. This is how I shop. And this is how a lot of people, especially people who have been on Posh for a while, shop is they shop by just in. So the newest listed items. And so when you relist an item, you take your old item that would not pop up new on the just listed part of the world. And it would swoop it right up to the top if just listed. And so that could be, and very often is beneficial. So that's what happened with this dress. It was listed for so long, down to like $10, and I relisted it for $25, and I got a $20 offer. And so yeehaw, it's out the door. I hope she loves it. Hope that... I always fill out a little um, note on the back of my business card. I think it just adds a personal touch, and people usually really like it. I'll show you when I'm done writing it. So this is my business card that I include in the package. It has my name and my business name and my email if people need to email me. And then on the back, I always just write a little note like I hope this one I write. I hope that you love your new dress and joy. And it's just the little things like that that I don't have to do as a business, but I just like to do because I think it is cute and makes people want to reshop for my closet. Now this is the pretty package I made for her. They don't always look this pretty, but Apparently they do this time. I have my Poshmark mailers that I know some of you might see and say, why did you pay that much for them? I didn't. I got them for free when I bought somebody's inventory out. Um, she gave me like a half a million poly mailers and I was like, thank you very much. These were so expensive when they first came out and I got 
probably about 400 assorted poly mailers, including a bunch of the Poshmark ones for free. And so I wasn't mad about that. She's taped the label. I have a Rolo, best business decision I ever made. If you're on the fence about getting a Dymo or a Rolo, um, get a Rolo, do not buy a Dymo. Whatever you do, full offense, don't buy a Dymo. Sorry, Dymo, you make a horrible product. Rolo all the way. Or the Brother ones are pretty good too if you want one that you can print off your phone, it's just a lot more expensive. But yeah, that's that first sale. The next thing I sold were American Eagle skinny jeans. I'm not gonna do this for all of these because I'm not gonna make you sit through me rambling while I package eight, 18 things or whatever. And so for jeans, I always just wrap them up with a little bit of twine to keep them together. They don't need a ton of protection, especially if I'm already mailing them in plastic. But yeah, like I was saying, I think that is one of the most beneficial features that Poshrek has made in a long time. I think they finally listened to their... <laughs> Poshrek is just a PR disaster. Whoever's doing their PR needs to find a new job. Like, I think they're finally getting some stuff right and like listening to sellers and what they want. But like, nobody wanted the story feature. And where is it? I don't have it. I have... I'm, I've been on Posh for like six years. I usually get new features really quickly in like the rollout. Nope, I don't have it yet. I mean, I don't really want it. I'm never going to use it. But I think things like the copy listing or the inventory numbers, stuff like that, like really practical things are what Poshmark sellers want out of the app. And so I think that was a really, really good move. Um, and I think they're finally, for the last two like big current events in the world, they were very like reluctant to make a statement or like make meaningful donations or whatever. And the TikTok disaster uh, for coronavirus relief, we just won't even talk about that. But they ended up donating $100,000 to coronavirus relief, which was good in my opinion. And they are donating 100000 some substantial chunk of money to social justice organizations after George Floyd's murder too, which I think is also good. But I think there's a lot of work to be done in the C-suite level of like every company and you know Poshmark is a very diverse company which makes me happy and help and makes me want to keep supporting them um but I think everybody has work to be done but that is my woke plug for today but I am going to time lapse the rest of my shipping so you don't have to listen to me ramble the whole time but yeah I'll see you in a minute my very speedy shipping, I'm back to talk to you while I package up two of my last sales. And the reason why I'm taking a second to talk about these particular sales is because they were from my Instagram. And I think not a lot of people talk about using Instagram as a platform to resell on, but it probably makes up a quarter of my business at this point. Um, and I really enjoy doing it because on top of Sorry, Haley just FaceTimed me in the middle of me uh, doing that at Haley's Hangar, who is my one of my best friends who I made from my Instagram. But what I was saying is that my Instagram is just an extension of my business. It's an extension of my business that I love wholeheartedly. Like, I really enjoy doing it. I've made some of my amazing friends like Haley and Jack and Ryan. I, I'm sure a lot of you subscribe to their channel, Jack Valentine. I've made them all through Instagram, but at the end of the day, my Instagram is an extension of my business. And so what I do on there and what I try to represent myself as on there is genuine, but it is my business. And so I do treat, especially like selling things on Instagram, like my business. And so it's been a really kind of fun extension and really quite accessible for every anybody to do. Now, I don't have an Instagram shop. I just do like story sales. I do my thing called Hall O'Clock, which I think is a win-win for everybody because people get to learn new brands and styles that I'm picking up at thrift stores. 
as well as they are able to buy those things from me if they want them. And I usually give people on Instagram a really good price as I should sell them through PayPal. Another thing that if you are a business owner, reseller, or want to jump into selling things on social media, one of the best tools you can do or get is sign up for a PayPal business account. And that way you can invoice people. I mean, game changer. I didn't have one last year. I was just doing Venmo and PayPal, like my normal PayPal. But being able to invoice people and do all my shipping through PayPal is exponentially easier. It's free minus the PayPal fee. Like, I don't know what it is, less than 10% when you sell something through that platform, but really, really good tool to use as a reseller on social media platforms. But I am packaging up two orders that I got uh, on Saturday um, afternoon because I shipped out eight things that I sold on Instagram on Friday when I did an Instagram story sale. I shipped all those out on Saturday morning, but these are the two stragglers. I sold this sweater and then I sold a daisy print blouse that I would have showed you, but I packed it up while I was talking to Haley on FaceTime for a total of $60 for both of them. And that is good with me as I got both of them for free. But yeah, I thought I would just talk to you a little bit about Instagram. I might even make a whole video on that in the future because I think it's really interesting. But also I'm going to take this opportunity to shamelessly plug my Instagram. It is at NCI Resale, the same thing that I always put in the description of my YouTube videos. And I think I make fun content, so you should follow me. But yes, so after this, we are going to take a little trip to the post office and then we are going thrifting. I just dropped my packages off at the post office. As you can see, there's lots of people here, so I wore my mask and everything, but that was what I've done so far. Now I'm going to go to Goodwill. Thank you, student service, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? Doing well, thank you for asking, what can I get started for you? Could I get a venti iced caramel macchiato with non-fat milk, please? Venti iced caramel macchiato with non-fat milk? Anything else? Nope, that's it. Thank you. Alrighty, we'll have chosen for you. Thank, Thank you. you. Priorities. Okay, so I just got to the first Goodwill. This particular Goodwill is in a very affluent area. Like, I mean, it's literally across the street from a Nordstrom and next to a Mercedes-Benz dealership. So there's usually good stuff here. And I mean, this is like one of the most affluent areas in all of Minnesota. Um, it's right outside the city on a lake called Lake Minnetonka, but yeah, I always find good stuff here. So I will update you once I get out. because it was really freaking expensive the next one was a really pretty j crew top but i just didn't think the style would sell super well right now and it was a couple years old then the third thing was something navy which is a nordstrom exclusive brand but had a lot of makeup stains on it okay so i just got out of the first goodwill i was in there for about an hour and i spent 119 dollars, and i got some really good stuff i mean there were some really good shoes like overall, good experience, would recommend. So now I'm going to go to another Goodwill that's really close by, and I will let you know what happens after I get out of that one. But overall, this one went really good. Uh, as you can see from the video that I 
took of my cart. I got some really good stuff, but that isn't even close to all of the good stuff that I got. And so I'm excited to show you guys what else I get today. Drunk. I've never seen you clearer than now. We're flying high. Floating somewhere up in the clouds. We're going out of ourselves. Can you feel it? Almost like I don't know if it's real. Cause when we're doing our thing, we're the wheels that won't stop turning. So take me on a trip, trip, trip. Nah, trip, trip, trip. Oh, I flick the switch, kill the lights. Oh, I wasted. City lights are shining so bright. All these empty faces. We don't care about them tonight. We're going out of ourselves. Can you feel it? Almost like I don't know if it's real. Cause when we're doing our thing, we're the wheels that won't stop turning. I know we're acting stupid. Okay, so I just came out of Goodwill Numero Dos. It is right there. And I spent $124. So if you're keeping track, I'm about $250 deep today. Uh, and I'm gonna make a bunch of money. I found, so one of my better finds in there as I took a video of was a pair of a, a line, Lululemon Align full length leggings. The funny part about that is the panties were still inside of them. Mm. But this Goodwill, marked them at $4.99. The Goodwill, the last one, has a whole rack of Lulu at the front, all marked for like $35 a thing. So like, that goes to, like, I, all of the Goodwills here, the pricing is based on like what the manager wants. And so some have like lower, like get price low, watch it go is one of my friend manager's motto. Other ones mark crap up so high, but then we'll have like designer things for $3.99. So I am not mad about it, but I'm gonna go get some lunch, even though it is 4 p.m. I'm gonna go home and I'll share my closet and I might take some pictures and do some listing tonight. So I'll take you guys with that. And then I'll go to the gym later. I got some Chipotle. Chipotle is my life. Sorry, that was middle school Nick coming back from the dead. So I accidentally stopped at another Goodwill on my way home because I have no self-control. The music was really loud and I don't want to get demonetized before I get monetized. So I only found one pair of shoes. It was a pair of Jeffrey Campbell wedges and they were cute. And there was also a child having a full blown meltdown in the store, but I was in and out of this store. Okay, so I am home from a long day of thrifting and I'm gonna get some listings up and I'm going to share my closet, but I just wanted to tell you guys that I spent $250 at Goodwill today, which is fun. Mm, my bank account says otherwise, but it's fine. I will make much more than $250 on the things that I bought. I got some really exciting stuff. I'm gonna try to get it all in like a thing for you guys or a 
video or a picture or whatever that thing's called. And then I'm going to do an Instagram haul o'clock later today. Once you see this, this will have already happened, but regardless, it'll be fun. So yes, I will try to bring you with me while I share my closet. I can't bring you with me while I'm listing because I list from my phone and not my computer. But nonetheless, I will see you guys in a little bit and I will take you to the gym with me. Bye. So I thought I hit the button on the time lapse. So I thought I was going to take a time lapse of me sharing my closet and listing. Uh, and then I never hit the button and then did it all anyway. So you guys don't have a time lapse of me listing or sharing my closet. So sorry. But I am going to show you guys me setting up my haul o'clock on instagram if you follow me on instagram shameless plug at mci re underscore resale um i always do haul o'clocks and i love doing them i talked a little bit about this earlier i'm going to show you how i set them up to do them and then kind of how i do it I'm not fucking stupid. I have my haul o'clock all set up and ready to go. I'm going to do that right now for you guys. And once I am done, I am going to go to the gym and I'll take you guys with. And that will be it for the day. It went really quick, actually. And thank you for keeping me accountable because doing things in front of a camera is a lot different than doing it not in front of a camera. <laughs> Okay, so I'm at the gym. I usually go to the gym every night at like 8.30ish because I'm a night person. And then I go home, I eat dinner because I always eat lunch really late, and then I work for a while and then I go to bed. I also, I promise I do do some fun things sometimes because like today it looks like I worked all day, which I kind of did, but I really do do some fun things sometimes. <laughs> I'm just leaving the gym. I'm sweaty and gross, but you know, health and skinny. But yeah, it is nine something. At, I think it's like 9.30. Really pretty sunset tonight as every summer night in Minnesota. It doesn't get dark here until like 11 p.m. if you didn't know in June. But yeah, it's been a good day. So it is 10 p.m. and we're back to where we started. I hope you guys liked following along with me today. This is the first time I've ever made a video like this, so please be kind to me. <laughs> but I did my best and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more from my channel, I'd love it if you hit subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.